This is part five of making a radius turning tool. Today we're going to be finishing off this little tool holder and hopefully case hardening these two components. We also need to make a bush for setting the cutting tool in its correct position. So the bush fits over the cutter and is used for setting the cutter in the right position using gauge blocks if necessary to get precise uh, movement. Now I'd um, specified it as being uh, quite narrow, only quarter of an inch wide. I'm going to make it a little bit wider to give it a bit more stability and I'm going to increase the diameter so that uh, my set screw doesn't stick out too much. I don't want to cut this and uh, just make a little land there uh, which, which uh, matches with the, with the nose of the cutter so it can be used on this side or this side. So the tool holder is now complete together with the two M4 set screws and likewise the collar with its M4 set screw and uh, that can go in from that side or that side depending on the size of the sphere that you're turning. We'll talk about that a bit more later. I've also made up this, uh, this cutting tool and uh, it's got a nice radius on there and it's honed so that should be ready for use. Now before we go any further I'd like to case harden this, in fact the tool holder, the bracket and the collar. But before I get there I'd like to just take some measurements. I'd like to check the squareness of the top with this face. I'd like to check that before and after heat treatment to see if there's any distortion. The reason for that is this was made from this piece of bright drawn mild steel and it was cut out in that orientation uh, if you remember and uh, the stress is set up in bright draw mild steel I believe the out, outer edge will be in compression and the inner in tension so they're just inbuilt stresses from the manufacturing process so there's a danger if you uh, remove material from a thin, thin section like this that it will distort that's why I cut uh, material from both sides carefully so I'd like to just see um, if this remains square between here and here before and after heat treatment. So I'm going to set this up on the surface plate and take some measurements and then heat treat it and then check it again afterwards. I've mounted the tool holder on my small angle plate and I've um, made sure it's square in this direction and also I've made sure that everything's clean and there's no burrs. So to get the work square I just swept across the top surface with the DTI looking for a consistent reading and it was actually quite easy to set it up. 
And what I'm going to be doing is checking the height across here from one end to the other, sweeping all the way across. And then we'll compare that with uh, how it looks after heat treatment. Now I'll show you from above so you can see exactly what the measurements are. So we'll start at the corner here and we'll zero that out. And as we sweep across to the far end in the center, I'm really amazed at how well that's come out. It looks to me as if it's within a quarter of a thou of squareness over that length, which I think is quite amazing. Anyway, the reason for checking this is to see if it uh, changes after heat treatment, after case hardening. So after cleaning up, here are our three carburized items. Uh, you can see the colors a little bit different from the original steel color. And also you can hear just by rubbing them together, they've got a different sound. So I'm happy with that. Uh, dimensionally, um, everything fits together as it did before. Uh, that's the same fit in there in the slide. And likewise, The cutter is still a good fit in the in the reamed hole. So what I'm going to do now is mount this back on the angle plate and check that for squareness. Mounted the bracket again on the angle plate and again uh, got it square in this direction. And uh, I just uh, give you an overhead view again so you can see what the surface flatness is like. Well, just sweeping across the width just to show that it is square. And then uh, if we start up in this, on this edge, and then down to the far edge, I think you can see that that is at least as good as it was before. So what I conclude from this is if you're making small components from bright draw mild steel it may not be necessary to normalize it to stress relieve it before machining there we are well I can't pretend that I haven't done a few sneaky test cuts already but uh, before I go too far I thought I would uh, just show you how easy it is to set up I I've discovered I don't actually need to remove the top slide um, not for small work anyway so it locates uh, very quickly and easily with these two T-nuts. I've started with aluminium and uh, this is probably going to be the easiest uh, option or the easiest uh, material to cut. And uh, just put the WD-40 on there.
the thing you've got to watch out for is when you, when you get up close to the chuck and that might be a reason for making a handle so that uh, you can keep your hand away from the chuck so I'm going to think about that So this is where the collar comes in, so you can bring the collar up, lock it, and then control the gap, or the amount by which you advance the tool, like that. Well, so far so good, uh, but this has really been a relatively easy test. This is uh, softish aluminium. You can also see here that I've not really got in very tight to this uh, collar here. And if you look back to my first video, the whole reason for making this is because I have another job in mind and I want to turn silver steel or drill rod, which is going to be a bit more demanding and it's going to have a much smaller diameter collar. So before I go ahead and test this on steel, I really want to look at how this can be developed further. Let's just take a closer look at uh, what we have already. Uh, what I haven't made clear is that the tool holder can actually be used in two ways. So this is uh, in the configuration for larger diameter work but uh, for smaller diameter and finer work this can be rotated like this and the tool mounted that way right from the very outset I, I was aware that there's a lot of unused space on the turntable and uh, that could be used for something else I had in mind that maybe I could mount the tool holder in different positions but that wouldn't solve the problem of getting into tight spots like this so what I'm thinking about now is a tangential tool holder so an alternative tool holder to be mounted on here as well where instead of holding the tool like this the tool is held underneath like this and that will enable me to get into much tighter spots so what I'm going to be looking at in part six is an alternative tool holder to be used with this um, that can hold the hold the tool at a suitable angle uh, for getting into tight spots like this but also by bringing the tool holder beyond center I'll be able to use it not only for uh, turning balls like this but also for cutting internal radii so that's uh, going to be part six and I do hope you'll join me for that.